All right, let's jump into a really fascinating deep dive today. You know, we talk a lot about website traffic, but how often do we really dig into what it's telling us? Right. And today, we've got some really interesting research to unpack about that. It's all about website traffic for university programs specifically. It is. <laughs> and how universities can use the data to really understand the impact of their digital marketing. And it's pretty amazing how much the online world has changed, even just thinking about how university websites have evolved over the years. I know. I bet if we dug up some of those old university websites, they'd look like ancient artifacts now. Oh, totally. In fact, the researchers in this study actually used the Wayback Machine to look back at what these websites look like. Can you imagine what a university website looked like back in like 2003? Oh, gosh. Probably a lot of, like, you know those really old web graphics? Yeah. And maybe some questionable font choices. Yeah, totally. Websites back then were basically just like online brochures, static, one-way communication. Yeah. The internet was a totally different place. Yeah. But fast forward to now, and websites are like these whole interactive experiences. Definitely. And that's had a huge impact on how institutions, universities included, invest in marketing. Makes sense. Marketing dollars tend to follow the eyeballs. Right. I mean, just look at the numbers. In 2014 alone, the education sector in Peru saw a 136% increase in spending on search engine marketing, SEM, and search engine optimization, SEO. Wow, that's a huge jump. But I guess it shows how important digital reach is for universities these days. Absolutely. I mean, if you want to attract students today, you have to be incredibly strategic about your online presence. It's not enough just to have a website. It's about understanding how people use it, what draws them in. Right. And that's where understanding your website traffic gets really interesting. Exactly. Because believe me, not all traffic is created equal. There are some really interesting patterns we can see in user behavior just by looking at where their traffic is coming from. Okay, so let's break down those traffic sources. Yeah. We've got the usual suspects, right? Direct traffic, search engines, referrals. Right. But I'm guessing there's a lot more to it than just looking at those numbers on a report. Oh, absolutely. It's yeah. it's kind of like, um, I don't know, having a list of ingredients versus actually tasting the final dish, yeah. right? Okay, I like that. So tell me more about these flavors of traffic. What's the story behind, say, search engine traffic? Sure. So imagine someone is, you know, searching online for a specific master's program. Right. They might be comparing different universities, looking for curriculum details, maybe trying to find information about scholarships. So these users coming in from search engines, they're often like tourists. Tourists. Yeah, they're there to kind of explore, maybe grab a quick souvenir, but they're not necessarily ready to unpack and stay a while. Okay, so they've got a purpose. They want to get in, get out. Exactly. So does that mean that a high bounce rate from search engine traffic isn't necessarily a bad thing? Not at all. It's all about context. If someone finds exactly what they need on that first page, the program flyer, the application deadline, whatever it is, then that's a win, even if they don't spend hours browsing your site. That's a good point. I'll admit I've definitely been guilty of like, panicking over a high bounce rate without really thinking about the bigger picture. Yeah. So if those search engine visitors are the tourists who are the like the long term residents of university website world. Those would be the people who come directly to your site. You know, they type in your URL or maybe they click on a bookmark. These are your loyal fans. They already know who you are. They trust you. Right. So it's all about brand awareness, building that reputation so that your university is the first thing students think of when they're considering their options. Exactly. And then, similar to direct traffic, you have referrals from trusted sources. Mm. That's also going to attract more engaged visitors. Makes sense. So let's say a student is writing an article about, um, I don't know, the top 10 universities for sustainability studies, and they click on a link to your program, right? Yeah, okay. They're coming in with a certain level of trust and interest already. They're not just browsing randomly. They're coming with a purpose and a recommendation. Exactly. So how does all of this actually translate to results for universities? Does the flavor of traffic really make a difference? It really does. And the research you shared actually looks at this in the context of tourism websites, which, like universities, they really rely on attracting the right kind of visitor. Right, because everyone's checking out destinations online before they even think about booking a flight these days. Exactly, exactly. And what they found was that visitors who came directly to the tourism site or were referred from like a trusted blog or a review site, those visitors tended to be much more engaged. Interesting. They spent more time on the site. They viewed more pages, all signs of a deeper level of interest. OK, so we've gone from basic traffic numbers to like really understanding user intent, engagement. It's fascinating. But how do we actually 
measure all of this. Like, there are so many metrics out there. Unique visitors, bounce rate, time on site, pages per visit. Where do we even begin? Yeah, it's like having this whole dashboard of dials and gauges, but you don't even know which ones to look at first. Like, how do you cut through all the noise and figure out which metrics actually matter? Right. And that's where, like, the real deep dive comes in, you know, because it's not just about looking at the numbers. It's about understanding what they represent. OK, so break that down for me. OK, so let's take unique visitors, for example. That tells you how many individuals are checking out your site, which is a good starting point for understanding reach. Right. So it's like almost like measuring the foot traffic into a physical building. Yeah, exactly. But then we also need to know, like, are people actually coming in and spending time in that building or are they just like glancing in the window and moving on. Exactly. And that's where those other metrics like time on site and pages per visit come in. OK, so those can tell us how engaging the content actually is. Exactly. Yeah. If they're spending a significant amount of time on your site and clicking through multiple pages, that's a good sign they're finding the content valuable. It's like the difference between someone grabbing a takeaway menu and someone like settling in for a multi-course meal. Exactly. Exactly. So how does this all play out in the real world? I know the research that you shared actually dives into a specific case study. It looks at eSAN's master's program website. Right, yeah, and this is where it gets really interesting because they went beyond just looking at overall traffic numbers. They actually dug deep into how these metrics differed depending on the source of the traffic. Ooh, getting granular. Okay, so what did they find? So for eSAN, they found that when it came to repeat visitors, those who were already familiar with eSAN and maybe seriously considering the program, for that group, paid search and organic search, those were the top drivers of quality traffic. Interesting. So people were coming back to maybe do more in-depth research, compare programs, that kind of thing. Exactly. But when it came to attracting brand new visitors, people who had never interacted with eSAN before, direct traffic was king. That's really interesting. It really highlights how important brand awareness is, especially in a competitive landscape like higher education. Absolutely. If a potential student has already heard of eSAN, maybe through a recommendation or a news article, they're more likely to just go straight to the source. Type in the URL or search eSAN Master's Programs. They're not clicking through ads. They're not sifting through pages of search results. They've got a destination in mind. This is gold dust for universities. Knowing which traffic sources are most effective for attracting different kinds of students, then they can use that knowledge to tailor their digital marketing. Exactly. Work smarter, not harder. Right. right. So for anyone listening who's maybe feeling a little overwhelmed by the world of website traffic, what's the, like, the key takeaway for them? I'd say it's about moving beyond those vanity metrics, those surface level numbers that don't tell the whole story. Right. Dive deeper, look at your traffic sources, understand what they're saying about user behavior, and then use those insights.